What's going on team? Welcome to the vlog. Today, we are in my garage, but we are not working out. What we're doing today is I'm trying to be a cameraman. Um, so I've just found this dude on Instagram who's doing some awesome content, like froth level content. And I've thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if I can do that with next to no experience. So here we are in my garage trying to get it done. It's much harder than I thought. So give you a little gander. So what we have here team, just trying to work on a little bit of layout stuff today. Um, it's going okay, given the fact, also check out the feature wall in the gym, going good, going well. But anyway, where are we? Sorry team, making sure I can see myself, there we go. Yeah, so I'm gonna actually do a video on the, the setup of the gym, because I've put quite a bit of time and effort into, into setting up the gym so I can do more content in here around working out and stuff. Sorry, I'm just adjusting the thing, the jobby tripod that I'm holding this camera with. But anyway, this is much harder than it looks, um, but I'm also having a lot of fun with it. I've got no external lighting, but I'm figuring it out by just adjusting things like shutter speed, uh, exposure and whatnot. If you are a phenomenal talent on the camera and you've got some top tips for me, let me know. Um, I also want to state that while I'm in here with no t-shirt on, probably got a slight glimmer going on, is it is actually hot as fuck today. And I'm in my garage. The garage door is broken, but also for lighting, it would be ideal to open it. The garage door should be getting fixed tomorrow, then we can crank that open uh, when we're working out in here. So we're sweating balls today uh, in here, but having fun. So anyway, stay tuned on social media. If I can figure it out, I might throw a few photos up in the vlog for you guys to see what I ended up coming up with. But again, it's just testament to the fact that, that no matter if it's business, if it's life, if it's entrepreneurship, sometimes you don't know. You don't know, you don't know what you don't know. And I don't know what I don't know when it, definitely when it comes to cameras. So I'm just figuring it out by trial and error playing, getting amongst it by fucking doing. So you guys can apply that same method. There's something you don't know, just figure it out. Google, YouTube, ask people, but do the Googling and the YouTube first is generally my, my rule of thumb is, did you Google it and did you YouTube that before you came to me? If you didn't, you're probably lazy. Uh, but anyway, again, sometimes you've just got to figure it out. And I will give credit to the last team that I was in uh, as a commando, commando flag there. Um, I will give credit to the team I was in. We were in a pretty technical role. It was a technical, tactical role. Um, but sometimes we would get gear that would come in um, and we would just be told to figure out how to use it. So we'd literally open up the, the, the manual for this technical bit of equipment and we'd literally just sit there. We would open up a computer, we'd connect to this bit of kit, we'd go open up the user manual and we would literally self-teach ourselves how to use it, would get really good at using it in a very, uh, what I would call, uh, lab or tabletop environment. And then we'd go out and try to use that kit in a more tactical setting. Um, and then from there, we would, just, we would just innovate and adapt. But anyway, I must continue. Thought I'd share that with you guys. Talk soon. <sighs> Hydrate. Right team, what is going on? We are in the office. It has been a hectic week. Uh, in the last video, you would have seen that I was taking sweltering photos um, in the garage. I think they came out all right. For someone who is self-taught when it comes to everything to do with this camera, um, we're out here learning. And that is business, that is entrepreneurship, that is my military career, that is life. Not knowing is not a good enough excuse. If you don't know, you better bloody goddamn find out. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff that I wanna show you guys. Um, maybe a couple of vlogs ago, I was talking about some stuff that I was ordering in for the podcast room, the shop uh, room that was gonna be going next door. I've changed plans on that. Um, but we still got the canvases in and the prints in anyway, but that does not matter um, because they will still come in use. And I just wanna show you guys because I think they turned out pretty freaking awesome. So the first one is Try to get you guys to see that. Is of my homie Spencer from Alpha Country. He did this photo shoot for us 
uh, we're entering the commando range uh, in a more tactical setting, running some room combat. Um, I fucking love that photo. Uh, so we got that one printed, that turned out good. What else did we get? We got Fitzy running, running up a mountain. It's a, a photo that's, I think just captures the essence of what the commando range was meant to be for me. Um, it was really designed for people who were out there getting after it and that's why we wanted durability and capability and performance without the weight. Uh, I think that photo captures it amazingly. So that photo was taken by uh, Caleb or also known as Adventuring Kiwi on Instagram. The next one we got, again, I think this entire shoot, anything of me, I think was the shoot I did with Caleb. Caleb did an amazing job over two shoots capturing uh, the commando range and I think in a really broad spectrum, uh, broad spectrum environments and setting and for me it just again really showcased like what the commando range was built and designed for. Um, in an outdoor setting, non-tactical setting I guess. But yeah, really captured it brilliantly. So again, that's another one for us. This photo here did really well on some Facebook ads last year. Uh, this photo did extremely well for us. And I think again, it just captures the essence of fucking Warfighter and what we're about. It, it's staunch. Okay, next one. I love that because it, again, I think that for anybody who's in New Zealand or from New Zealand, that's quite an iconic shot with Mount uh, Marahoni in the background. So yeah, again, Caleb. And then last but not least, because we can't have all photos of myself. Again, we need more models at WA, but it's hard to find them. Um, probably because I don't look. Uh, but the next one was a good friend of mine out of the UK doing huge things. Royal Marine Commando veteran, uh, former mountain leader as well within the Royal Marine Commandos. And he's doing great things, I think, for, for veterans and obviously for himself with a project called Sunray Series. If you haven't, check it out. Uh, the majority of the cast and the crew behind the scenes, um, well, especially uh, Sam himself, you know, they're doing a great job on a TV series, which I hope airs sometime this year on a platform, maybe Netflix, I don't know. Sam will have the details, but I think this is a great photo of Sam out in Wales, and I think that again just captures the essence of what it's all about. Again, uh, another another veteran involved with the business, which I love. The next stuff that I want to show to you guys is kind of what goes in behind the scenes. You know, when you're when you're creating a, a product, a lot goes into it. And one of the things that I've been obsessing over over the last last little bit, the last year and a bit, I forget how long I've been working on the commando range now, but it's camouflage patterns. And I don't think people understand how much actually goes into a camouflage pattern, especially when I'm looking at it from, I guess, I would say three three perspectives. One perspective is a, an effective camouflage pattern in a tactical setting, an effective camouflage pattern in a hunting setting, and a, ta and a, and a camouflage pattern just that's just aesthetic. As we know, Camouflage is often used in fashion, and so trying to create a camouflage pattern that ticks all those boxes is quite challenging. We then have different lights, so how you're about to see the camouflage pattern that I'll show you that we're working on, how, how you're about to see it um, will be different than how you see it, say, if it's, so in my, my office we have yellow lighting, um, and then when we go out to the gym we have natural lighting, then there's white lights, um, then there's uh, then there's you know direct sunlight. What does a camouflage pattern look like with direct sunlight on it? What does it look like out in the open country, in the close country? Um, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, so in low light conditions. There is a lot that goes into a camouflage pattern. When you look at the realm of places that it will be uh, em employed. So one thing that we have been working on was the, the ghost camo has really proven itself to, to go really well. Yes, in the low light conditions, but also um, as, an, as an alpine camouflage pattern out in the mountains, being out with Caleb before, where he's literally turned around, I think changed the lens or something on a camera, and he's turned back around, and the sun's literally just rising on the day. The sun is now hitting the camouflage pattern. It's hitting the rocks behind me, and he literally could not see me 
in the ghost and he couldn't see me until he seen my phone which was obviously highlighted green where is that here so until he spotted that he could not see me which was great uh, again i've had friends talk about stalking in um on on goats and the only place that they could stalk in on these goats i believe it was goats um was directly down onto them coming down a scree slope obviously which is gray shingle rock again uh, they got really, really close, and the goats just having no idea that they were there, just because the, the ghost camo was doing a great job. But I did want something darker, more of a black camo. So we've got the ghost camo. One that I've been working on recently is uh, Reaper. So this is a darker version. This is going to be coming out in our new athletic line, but this here, the amount of iterations we went through for me, for me to be happy with this camouflage pattern it really is mind-blowing how many times you've got to go through continually changing greys, changing blacks, just changing print methodology and going back and forth with our, with our fabric supplies to really get the camouflage pattern dialed in. Then there's also the challenge which comes into, and you'll see it, there are some brands here in New Zealand, um, I don't believe and I don't want to take a shot, but some of these brands, I don't think they put a lot of effort into what is called camouflage matching. That means, so this is a polyester, which has got stretch in it for the shorts. And then we're also bringing out a mesh, premium mesh training short, the comfiest shorts you're ever about to put on. But again, now getting that camouflage pattern dialed in on the mesh. And then again, these are both polyesters. If you print your camouflage pattern onto a nylon, now we're getting in the weeds team. But if you print your camouflage pattern on a nylon, then it can also look different than on a polyester. And then so you have to get the factory to work really hard. And again, this is my baby, so I'm always gonna care more about matching than the, the fabric supplier, but it's about pushing them to work really, really hard to get it, the camouflage pattern to look the same. Again, we're working um, with a company and with that company looking to supply to military and specialist military units. And so we are, have begun working with Multicam um, on our bespoke fabrics to get Multicam uh, color matched across our range of fabrics that's to their spec. So again, we have to send uh, rolls, rolls uh, a decent roll, I think at 30, maybe 30 yards of each fabric off to Multicam, and then they go into testing and development to develop their camouflage pattern to print onto our clothing to Multicam's spec. So there is a lot that goes in the camouflage. It is hard. Uh, even with Multicam, they just don't give us a file and say, sweet, print it. They will literally decide what we print how we print it. So if we release multicam clothing and you don't like the multicam print, it's not our fault. <laughs> uh, but again, multicam is good because it means military contracts. But no, we are working on some exciting projects. A lot of hard work going in though. Nothing is over the line, we're just putting in the work. Uh, the next thing that I've wanted to work on, uh, and, and a lot of people have been keen on, is a camouflage pattern for the bush. So a, a a jungle camouflage pattern or a green camouflage pattern or a multicam. It's been a, been a pretty big request and something that I've been excited about. Now, with this camouflage pattern, we've been through a, a few iterations, lots of testing on different fabrics, and then our fabric supplier has a brand new fabric that has not been released to the market yet or has just been released to the market, uh, which is the pants fabric that we use for our commando pants. So this commando, uh, the, new, the new fabric for the commando pants that we're, we're about to get into testing um, is the same construction method used to make Kajura. Most people know Kajura is tough. That's all the detail we need to go into. Kajura is tough. What we're getting now is a nylon fabric with stretch that's lightweight, um, but has the strength of Kajura. So this is an extremely innovative fabric, which is really exciting. Um, and I'm looking forward to the first samples to come through um, to go and absolutely thrash the ass out of the fabric to see if it's true. And I've got some nasty locations, but again, so this here is one of the, the, the latest the latest swatches that we've been sent, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I think the, the camouflage patterns turned out great. 
and I think as a multi-terrain camouflage pattern, I think that is going to do really, really well. Uh, looking forward to getting it out into field testing. So again, this is the new nylon fabric. We've, we've tested it. Um, we're happy that the camouflage pattern, again, we go from a digital camouflage file to a real camouflage pattern printed on the fabric. There's variances there, so we have to keep going through Pantone colors until we get the color that, that we're right or that I'm happy with. Um, and then we get into, in, into the field testing phase. And then again, maybe in the field testing phase, we find we may still need to, to tweak some of the camouflage, uh, the, the, the patterns or change the Pantones. So again, there's a lot that goes into making a camouflage pattern and it's a really rewarding process, especially uh, when, when you are passionate and you are, yeah, when you're, when you're extremely passionate about what you're doing, it's really rewarding when you come through from an idea uh, to a, a, a digital camouflage pattern, to then tweaking the pattern, to then tweaking Pantone colors, and really trying to find a color palette that's gonna give you um, the best camouflage pattern that's gonna help you out in the ground in a tactical or in a hunting, hunting context. So really happy with that camouflage pattern um, looking forward to getting into the testing. But again, even that was hard. Let me try to find. So this was a, another one that we had here. This is more jungle focused. I'm not abandoning the, this camouflage pattern just yet. Um, but this was, the, this was the last camouflage pattern that we worked on. So this one here is obviously there's more greens in it. That one there has a tan in light of the, I can't remember the Pantone color but the, the light green that you that you see there. So this here, I think, still has a lot of merit for a jungle camouflage pattern, where that is more of a, more of a multi-cam camouflage pattern. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys what goes on behind the scenes. It's not all social media and posting, although content does take up a, a, a lot of time and it's something that I am passionate about making clothes and clothing and making gear and camouflage patterns and technology, you know, the, the technology in this is the first of its kind. It's, there's, there's nothing like this on the market right now. It's the, the, the strength um, of, this, of this fabric, the, the lightness, the dexterity, the mobility of the fabric, all in one. It's something I'm very excited about sharing. Um, the next thing is is, is, the, is, in the, is the athletic line, putting a lot of time and effort into that. I think the deal is in the detail. And so on the next athletic line you guys are going to see, there's going to be way more, the little touches, little bits of branding, which I think focus, god damn you. It ain't focusing. Let me try something here, team. No, I'm still a noob, okay? But anyway, the little touches, the little, the little things, the little things matter. I think, oh hats, that is something that we've also been getting flogged about, but I am super picky when it comes to hats. I've had some hats come in and I'm just not happy with them. These hats, we are almost there. The sizing needs to be adjusted slightly, um, and then we just want a high quality mesh. Uh, the panelling at the front and the canvas at the front is really good quality. The print is really good quality, but the mesh is low quality, so we're getting the the team to source a higher quality mesh um, to make sure that this is up to the warfighter standard and we are pursuing excellence. So team, as you can see, there's sweltering in my body office here today. But uh, we've got a lot going on. I'm excited for 2022. We've already dropped three new t-shirts. We have the athletic line dropping in February. We have a new training program dropping now, I would say in March. Um, and then at the same time, we're developing a insulation layer, a, so a puffer jacket. We are developing a fleece jacket. Uh, we are working on a collaboration with Alpha Country uh, and Spencer and the team on a shirt um, flannelette, obviously. And we are also working on some of the, the Mark II range for the Commando gear. So, there's a lot on, thought I would share that with you guys. I hope some of you enjoyed seeing a little bit more behind the scenes. Let me know if you enjoy this stuff and I will do more of it and probably go more in depth. So let me know. 
What is going on team? Welcome to my garage. Uh, it is Thursday evening and we're getting ready to go hunting. So we're ending the week with a bang. Um, as you can see, pack's pretty much good to go. A um, few more things to put in in the morning and then I think tomorrow at lunchtime we're going to get on the road, make the road move. A couple of hours up to spot X, going back to uh, Longview Hut. That was the, that was the last uh, hunting vlog that you guys would have seen. Heading back to Longview Hut because it was like bloody pack and save out there. So we're going to head back there, see if we can drop a, a stag or two, get some meat in the freezer and uh, scratch the itch before you know we get pretty busy. Dave, heading out with Dangerous Dave. Um, but obviously I've got Wolf Wider to run. He has a thriving uh, career as a project manager. So we can get quite, we can both get quite busy. And uh, there is a lot of time between now and our big raw trip that we've got planned. So me and Dave putting in quite an effort this year. We're gonna be choppering into spot X. Uh, super excited about that. But again, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of time between now and then, but we probably will both get busy with our uh, professional lives as well as I have a family. So getting another hunt in before then. Super excited. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. The next vlog is gonna be obviously a hunting one. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you do get value from this, all I ask is you subscribe and like. I'm, I'm in there team, I'm a, I'm a professional. I'm a real vlogger now. Subscribe and like, no. Um, and if you are getting value from it, please do share uh, with friends, family, whoever. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. Fitzy, out.